We have uh, the right product for this marketplace. We compete against effectively everybody. I mean, Southwest is the latest entrant, but uh, today we compete against um, most of the U.S. Uh, major airlines, um, most of the Pacific Rim national airlines, and we've um, you, you know succeeded against all of them. And we don't anticipate things being different in the new environment either. But you, I mean, you must know about this phenomenon called the Southwest effect. The, on those routes where Southwest does compete, prices are lower than they are on average, about forty-five dollars per seat than they are on those routes where Southwest is not competing. So, I mean, clearly, you're going to have to have a, a, a lower price. You're going to have lower margins. You're going to have to price according to whatever Southwest is doing when they start their uh, routes there, right? Well, I, 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 I'm not sure that's entirely right in the following sense. I think a lot of the places where Southwest goes into, there's sort of limited competition to begin with. Uh, and so prices may be a little higher than they otherwise would be. Uh, that isn't the situation in the markets that we fly. We fly against uh, uh, lots of competitors. I mean, coming out of a place like Los Angeles, we fly against already four or five different competitors. It's a very competitive marketplace. Uh, adding one more competitor into that marketplace is unlikely uh, to have the kinds of effect of adding a, a competitor when there's only, uh, you know, when a carrier is sitting on a monopoly, for example. Mark, you recently uh, initiated this dividend and perhaps could kind of entice those investors who might have been a little bit scared about this upcoming competition. What are your plans for the dividend? Well, I think uh, we're doing a number of things to uh, really communicate the level of confidence we have in our business model. Uh, we, you know, we have, for the, for the routes that we fly, for, for serving Hawaii, for bringing people from around uh, the Pacific Rim and from North America to, to Hawaii. There is no carrier that is better positioned than we are. And we think that doesn't change. We, that doesn't change when uh, United adds capacity as they're, as they're intending to do in 2018. It won't change uh, when Southwest or any other carrier uh, comes in. Um, the way that we've chosen to express that confidence was uh, firstly to buy back a lot of stock in the last uh, uh, quarter and uh, now to, uh, to uh, commence a dividend uh, to demonstrate that, that we think our business model uh, is resilient. But, you know, clearly you know your stock is down 30 plus percent just this year. Hardly a vote of confidence from Wall Street in that business model when other airlines have been pretty, doing pretty darn well this year. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's, our stock is down 30 percent. It had moved up from uh, $2 a share to $60 a share over the uh, preceding decade or thereabouts. So uh, I, I think, you know, if you look over the long term, if you look over several years, uh, Hawaiian Airlines stock has been uh, the, the bell of the ball. We, we perform better than, than other carriers have. And once this additional capacity uh, that is coming into the market is digested. Uh, we think, um, th you know, we, we think the sort of quality of our, uh, of our brand, of our franchise and of our business model will shine through. And I'd point out that, you know, we've had other pulses of capacity before. What we're looking at now is, is far from unprecedented. Uh, two, three years ago, we had, uh, at that time, Alaska Airlines moved in very aggressively right. into the marketplace. When right. the dust settled, um, our market share went up and our margins went up. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.